Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to uh, import your reference images into Autodesk Maya to use uh, for modeling purposes. So, um, But before we even dive into that, I want to show you how to sort of prepare your scene uh, basically for the rest of the semester. It'll make it a little bit easier to work with. So. Um, the first thing I want to do is uh, I want to set my project um, and what that does is it basically creates a default uh, folder <clears throat> where Autodesk Maya is going to save everything too. So uh, let me just show you how it works. So the first thing uh, we're going to do is we're going to go to file and then we're going to go all the way down here to set project. Okay, file set project. Now you'll have a little window pop open, uh, like a browser basically, and just go ahead and locate the folder that you want to set your project to. Remember, this is going to be a folder where we're going to save everything into. So I called mine character modeling, and I have a folder here with reference images that uh, has the reference images I'm going to import. But I'm just going to show you, once I select my character modeling here, I don't have to, you know, I'm not saving anything out, I'm just setting sort of a directory where Maya knows to save everything to. So in this directory, you just have to be in the folder. So don't make, make sure you don't have any other uh, files or folders or anything selected in this directory. Just make sure it's just the folder that you're in. And then I want mine to be set to character modeling. So I'm gonna go ahead and press set. And you'll get this little pop-up this location, yada yada yada, does not contain a project definition file, workspace.mel. It's, uh, it's a script that Maya uses. It, it does it in the background before we even realize, but we're creating a new directory for it. So um, what we're going to do is we're not going to select another location. We're going to just click create default workspace. And that's it. So I want to show you something else. Now I want to show you how to save file save scene as and you're going to notice that it automatically takes you directly to that uh, folder and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this uh, uh, character model underscore 001 and I'm going to hit uh, actually I don't even need to do that I'm just going to save it as character model uh, Maya binary and I want to show you something really cool here click save as file being saved blah 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 blah. click continue and now I want to show you in just a few moments I'm going to show you how to import these images and then we're going to save it again and I'm going to show you something really neat since we've already saved out one file right we've saved it out as character model or whatever uh, you saved yours as um, and just a moment I'm going to show you what uh, what's really neat about this so um, in order to import your reference image planes, in the front um, viewport, we're going to import our front reference image. So the way to do this is we're just going to go over here to import, should come up. Okay, so I was waiting for the little text to come up, but uh, import image so if you right click on it but I think of this little icon as a sort of like a little Polaroid camera you know with the Polaroid picture coming out that's how I think of it so I'm gonna just go ahead and click on that and then I'm going to go to my reference images and this is going to, going to be my front reference image and you'll see it's gonna load a preview of it right over here and I'm gonna click open going to take a second and you'll see I've got now my front reference image now the other thing I want to do is um, because I've got this grid on here um, you know you can't see that the image that well I'm just going to show you how to turn your grid on and off so if you go to display and go to grid it just turned it on in the, the, the perspective viewport so if that happens it it's a little weird sometimes, so if you do it twice, it'll turn the grid off for everything. And then if you just go ahead and zoom in, you can see, even though from far away, it kind of looks a little weird. 
um, but if you zoom in it does retain all that information all right so um, that's my uh, reference image and now I'm going to import my side reference image and in case you didn't already know I'm just toggling spacebar to switch between uh, viewports with my mouse hovered directly over whichever viewport I'm in so now I'm going to go into my side reference image or side reference viewport or side viewport and I'm going to import my side reference image plane um, so what I like to do is I like to name this actually even before I go to the next part I like to name this before um, so this way in my outliner I always know what everything is I know it's image plane one but I'm going to rename it and name it front reference image and now I'll always know it's my front reference image now the next thing I'm going to do is obviously I'm going to do the same exact thing except in the side viewport so I'm going to click this little side uh, or import image uh, button and then right over here I'm going to go to my reference images and side reference image concept Oop, there it goes and then I'm going to click open and just give it a second and now I've got my side reference image so one of the things I would like to show you from here is uh, I'm in my perspective view and the reason why those rulers are so important to match up the proper scale and proportion to each image plane is so that they match up in here when we begin modeling they don't have to be absolutely hundred percent perfect but it's very good to have them very very close so you'll see I've sort of have the chin about the chin then the pectorals roughly the uh, side actually kinda goes up the side but if we base it off the front the front matches um, shorts are a little high so it looks like I may need to do some rough adjustments um, to this but it is pretty pretty accurate um, so it doesn't need to be perfect but the closer in accuracy it is to one another the a little bit easier it becomes so um, but it doesn't need to be absolutely 100 percent perfect um, because we need to typically it never is and you know really sort of have to start filling in the blanks because these are only two dimensional images um, and we're going to be building a three dimensional object so we especially on the three quarters area you know the three quarters we really need to start to fill that in and um, create that depth uh, in there so anyway another few things I'd like to show you before I close this video out is um, <clears throat> I'm going to go to I'm going to turn my grid on one more time and this is just what I like to do um, if you start modeling and I know when I've first started character modeling I always kept my characters uh, reference image planes uh, like this um, and I would just sort of <laughs> model around them and um, it wasn't very great but it for whatever reason it just kind of helped me um, work uh, around some of these areas I was struggling with so um, you can sort of figure out whatever is most comfortable for you but I'm going to show you how I personally uh, prepare my scene uh, before I begin modeling and I've got my grid on here and I'm just showing you sort of I'm going to just basically drag this out I'm going to press select oh and rename this side reference image um, and I'm just going to basically drag this out and I'm gonna drag this one out so say negative keep it e even numbers so something like that I might even I could probably even go like negative a hundred and negative a hundred that's probably a little bit better so I model it like this um, because it's just easier for me and then this way I don't have to work around the image planes and all that kind of stuff but the other thing I actually do and this is a totally a personal preference um, of yours um, is you could select 
um, these image planes and then in your attribute editor right here it's also uh, this button here it'll turn your attribute editor on and off um, in here under front reference image shape uh, under display you can do looking through camera and it's gonna say you can choose the camera you want it to look through so I'm gonna choose front because that's my front reference image and then on the side I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm gonna just cl click on the looking through camera and it's gonna be side and then I'm gonna go back and now you're gonna see and I'm gonna turn my grid off you're gonna see that although I can see them in my front and side reference image uh, front and side orthographic viewports excuse me um, I can no longer see them in my perspective view but that's because primarily a lot of the modeling I'm going to be doing um, is going to be straight in the orthographic viewport the front and the side uh, when I'm working on this model and then I sort of make my changes uh, as needed in the perspective view and you'll see uh, when we get to that point so um, anyway uh, now let's go ahead we've got our image planes named uh, front and side um, you have them located right here um, and one more thing I can show you quickly uh, we do cover this much more in depth in a later lab um, but I'm gonna go ahead and select both select one image plane and shift select the other one and I'm gonna go to layer and I'm gonna create layer from selected and in here I'm gonna double click on the layer name and I'm gonna call this reference imi images and you can always change the color and stuff like that but I'm gonna leave it like this and the reason I do this is because now if I want to turn them on or off um, I can also click on this empty checkbox and what this basically does I'm gonna leave it on R it makes it so I can't accidentally select it and move it or anything. So we basically have now got our entire scene. We've got this image reference images on a layer. Um, we have it basically locked. That R stands for basically renderable. Um, but don't need to worry about that at the moment. And um, also, um, we have our file saved once. Now, now that we've already saved it once in the folder that we're you know, want to save to. I'm going to just go ahead and press Control S, or that's the keyboard shortcut for File Save Scene. So Control S, just click Continue, and it should. Oh, what I meant to do is uh, Control Alt S. Excuse me. So if I do Control Alt S, and this is the really cool thing. So Control Alt S. I have to make changes. So Control Alt S. I'm gonna press continue. And you're gonna see it renames it dot zero zero one. But because we have already set our project um, to a folder, um, I just want to show you if I go to open scene. You're gonna see that we have our character model, the first one we saved. So you have to save it at least once just so it has that naming. Um, you also have to set the project so it'll automatically save to this uh, folder you're saving to. Um, but if you can use the keyboard shortcut Control alt s uh, throughout the semester, um, you're always going to be keeping, creating new save files of your, your uh, model and it becomes extremely useful, especially let's just say you, you come to a point and you know it starts, you know, you, something really bad happened I don't know like the model just kinda exploded on you let's just you know whatever um, or it's just not opening well it's something's weird you have you, when you save it like this you can have you know so many different save files previous save files to choose from um, if anything happens let's just say it crashes or it doesn't save properly and you're like oh my god I haven't saved a new file in the last six days I've been constantly saving over character model instead of you know pressing control alt s and uh, file increment and save um, this way you're gonna have you know it'll be the next one I save will be uh, control alt s ok 
Control Alt S. Continue. You're going to see it automatically renames it dot zero zero two. So it's a great, great way uh, to quickly uh, save a file. But not only that, it saves it as a new name. Uh, it keeps it in numeric order, so you always know which one is the previous one uh, you last worked on. Um, so I strongly recommend it. Um, set your project folder. Um, so that's file set project okay import your reference images and um, from this point forward I strongly recommend doing file increment and save and this way uh, your file um, by setting the project when you do increment and save it's always going to save directly to that folder so super useful um, and really speeds up the process of saving you don't have to constantly rename character model dash zero zero one whatever right um, just increment and save so uh, basically um, the requirements for this assignment um, are uh, import your front reference image import your side reference image and then submit a screenshot of uh, your Maya file with the imported image planes in here. So something like this, if you took a screenshot directly of this uh, screen right here, this would work perfectly uh, for your submission. Um, so that's really um, all I've got for you. Um, and yeah. Um, the creating a layer is an optional feature, but I do recommend it. Um, however, it's not a mandatory part of the submission. Um, and yeah, other than that, uh, again, if you do have any questions, shoot me a message. And thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.